Joanne Black is America's leading authority on referral selling, a professional speaker, seminar leader, and author of No More Cold Calling, the breakthrough system that will leave your competition in the dust from Warner Business Books in hardcover and in audio uh, book. Uh, her book is based on lessons learned from over 30 years of sales and management experience, and you don't admit that to everyone. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since founding the company in 1996, Joanne has built her business solely on referrals. Th that's true, huh? Well, I don't lie, Reese. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely Only true. Only on referrals. So this is your previous book, No More Cold Calling, and you have a new book coming out, which is called... Pick Up the Damn Phone. <laughs> <laughs> So you have no more calling and pick up the damn phone. What's, what's, what has changed? <laughs> I started to update this book, and I realized, no, it wasn't an update. It's a new book because a lot's happened in the last few years. Mm -hmm. The premise of the book is that what's the correlation between referrals and technology and then again sales? The basis is technology is a fabulous tool. We know that. Right. Uh, but it is a productivity tool. But nothing replaces that personal conversation and building relationships. Nothing. Even texting. <laughs> Even texting. <laughs> we need to talk. Okay. Yeah. In your book, you talk a lot about why referral selling is the most effective way to sell. And, of course, we all know it. I think anybody who's in business always loves to get a referral. But, you know, you explain it so well. Why don't you go into what makes it so, such a good way of getting uh, customers. Oh, I can very easily share that with you. And it's, the answers have been the same over the last 17 years. Whenever I ask anyone, do you love to get referrals? They say exactly the same thing. There's five reasons okay. that they love it. First, they're pre-sold, right? So when you've been introduced, when you have a referral, which is the definition of a referral, you have to get an introduction, right. the person knows about you. So they really want to talk to you. That's a huge difference. And by pre-sold means they know the business reason they want to have the conversation. And second, it really eliminates the competition most of the time. Now, sometimes there is competition. Right. But when there is, you have that inside track. You know, you're hearing things nobody else does. That's true. You often hear, hear the, you get a little background story so you know what's going on with the client's situation. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, the client, already you come into the conversation kind of feeling like, you've well, you've had an introduction. They, you're, you're somebody who is a, knows the, somebody they know. That's right. So it's very comfortable. You arrive with trust. They mm -hmm. trust you. You have credibility which is sometimes not so easy for salespeople to gain. Yeah. Well, in fact, a lot of the, what's going on on the Internet with Internet marketing is about building credibility, and that takes time. That's right. So this way. Yeah, it's almost instantaneous, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, those are three reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that you're pre-sold, that you ace out the competition, that you have trust and credibility. And another really great reason, because none of us have a lot of time, right? So our sales process shortens. It doesn't take as long. I mean, you think about it. When you have an introduction, you have the conversation, that you skip a lot of those awkward first steps, right. Who don't you? Who am I? Yeah. What, are, yeah, what, you know, what gives me credit? What are my credentials? You know, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, what are you doing here? And you right. usually get right to what is it that you need? How can I help you? That's right. Right. So it's, it's a huge time savings. And also cost savings, because when you collapse your sales process, well, it doesn't cost as much. Right. And there's no cost to referrals. Right. And the really big reason, and the fifth, and some people say the most important, is the huge conversion rate when you get the introduction. Right. So I'd ask you, when you've received an introduction to the person you want to meet in the past, what percent of the time has that person become a customer? Geez, I'd say more, well more than 50% of the time if they wind up doing the job. Sometimes you get a lot of people that call and, you know, sort of they're thinking about doing something and then they decide not to do it. But of those who, I, I very rarely have people go elsewhere. So, there you go. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, I think that is the thing that I think people recognize is, uh, is, is well, your close rate is much, much better. Most people say it's well over 50%. In fact, many say 70, 90%. Wow. It's huge. Yeah, I'm not that good of a salesperson, <laughs> no. so my close rate is probably not as good as it could be. Well, it is. I mean, where else can you get a conversion rate of over 50%? This is true. Nowhere. 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 For all those reasons, referrals are the way to work. 
and that's why my business is 100% referrals. Okay. So you're, uh, you know, you have this very specific definition of referrals, which I'd like you to share with folks, because uh, I've been in some leads clubs, and, and you get things that are not referrals, but people somehow think they are. And where do people get mess messed up with that? Well, they get messed up a few ways. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, as I said, a referral means you have an introduction. And an introduction can be by phone, it can be by email, it can be in person. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're local or you have some kind of really close relationship and it makes sense to get together in person. Yes, we've had those coffee meetings. Somebody That's can right. And say, let's all get together and yeah, uh, those you, are the best. They are. But you don't want a referral introduction to just anybody, do you? No. So in some Well, they have to have a reason. Well, yes, and you have to convey that business reason to the person who's referring you, who's your referral source. Mm -hmm. So here's an example. I will introduce you, Reese, to a connection of mine, not just because you're a nice guy. I mean, you'd have to be a nice guy first, otherwise right. <laughs> it wouldn't bother. But I'm going to introduce you because there's a business reason I can communicate to my connection why they should take the meeting with you. Right. Right? So you need to be clear with me exactly who you're looking for. And I will do my best to make that introduction. Because otherwise you waste your time. I see. So it's, it's, a, it's not, only, not only, well, there's nothing we can do about what the other person does in terms of a referral. You know, sometimes somebody says, hey, I know there's a new business I saw on the street. You should go talk to them. That's not a referral. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so... What is it that we can do to make sure that we enable people to give us better referrals? That's what we can control. That's right. We can. So we need to educate our referral source, mm -hmm. working from the premise that everybody really does want to make a good referral. People ask me all the time, Joanne, would this be a good referral for you? Mm -hmm. We want to put good people together, and we want to make sure it's the right fit. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to communicate exactly who we're looking for. And Reese, this is a little bit counterintuitive. Okay. <laughs> well, how so? We are tempted to have a very broad range of who we're looking for because we don't want to leave anything out. Yeah, anyone with a pulse. <laughs> well, not, not quite that <laughs> oh, broad. Oh, and a checkbook. Yeah, yeah, a checkbook works. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll start the conversation with anyone who. Right. right. Well, it's not anyone. Right. Because that would waste your time. Right. If there's someone you really want to meet, so it could be a certain level in a company, certain kind of person, certain kind of business, certain business need, then you need to communicate that to your referral source. Who are you looking for? And I encourage people to be really, really specific. What's counterintuitive about it is we're afraid if, if we leave something out, we don't, won't get any business. Right. But I've seen too many times when someone's asked for a referral and they say, well, it could be this person, this person, this person, this kind of, co and then you just get lost in all the commas. Right. And I've, I've been in referral groups and you're trying to, you want to give referrals to people. Uh, and, um, and so they, if those people who say, well, anyone, I'm looking for people who need a haircut. Well, that's a lot of people. But, you know, if somebody says, hey, you know, I'm really doing something special with, I mean, any, it could be any differentiator, redheads. Yes. Right? Well, now I can think of some people, right? Immediately it triggers some some frame of reference somehow. So now you think, oh, now I can think. Because otherwise you just think, well, I can think of anybody, and then you wind up referring nobody, really. Well, that's it. It's confusing to your referral source. In fact, I had somebody I know who is a life coach, and she's trying to figure out what her expertise to mm -hmm. communicate should be. She's an identical twin. And someone had suggested to her that she work with twins. Oh, wow. Now, you might think that that's really, really narrow. It's not, especially today when there's, you know, so many twins and, and multiples out there. But oh, right. even, even a generation ago, there were, there's plenty of twins. And that could end up going into siblings, working just with siblings. Right. But there's something about twins that's really an incredible connection that only a twin can understand. Right. So you imagine the power she would bring to that relationship. And I bet everybody you speak to knows someone who's a twin. This is true. This is true. And, you, then, and then that person has uh, a specialty that's different from everybody else out there. You know, uh, people often wonder what their unique, uh, you know, what's unique about their business. And if you do, you know, develop, if you just decide I'm going to focus on this group, well, that's, that's your, in a sense, your edge. That's, that's correct. Because people buy the expert. Right. right. 
I think the, the age of the generalist is gone. I really do. When someone spends their money and they choose to do that, they want to spend it with a person who's going to deliver, the person who knows who they are, what they do, who has experience in that profession, in that industry, in that particular uh, aspect mm -hmm. of their business. That's what they do. So if you are an expert, wow, you're going to be found out. You want to make it easy for people to find you. When anybody thinks of a referral or here's a company that, you know, I'd really like to build a referral business, who do you think they call? <laughs> that's, just, that's true. It's correct. That's it. It's a very small niche. It's that first part of the sales process. Right. How do you get the meeting at the level that counts? Right. Because That's from what your, it is. Your, from your background, you are qualified to be a sales trainer of any stripe, right? You could do you could do sales training. I could, but you've chosen to do specifically this, which narrows it, it down. That's that's correct. And then and then you're the specialist in it. Well, I am. And you've studied it. Well, uh, yes, I have, and I have a huge network. If I'm not the right person, I am the first to refer to someone else. Because if we don't focus on what we're really good at, our expertise and the niche we've carved for ourselves, we're going to be like everybody else and we won't get the business. Right. And there is another reason that we want to be really specific, and you go into this in your book quite a bit, is the kinds of clients that you don't want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't ask for the kind of clients you do want, you might wind up with them. And, and who are they? Oh, I call those the PETA clients, P-I-T-A. Uh -huh. Yeah, the pain in the ass. Okay. All right, so anytime I ask any group of salespeople, do you have, anybody have a pain in the ass client? Every hand goes up. Right, well, we all do. Yeah, anybody have more than one? Hands stay up. <laughs> well, what, hap what happens when you get a PETA client? Well, generally, you, I, I'd say that, you know, what makes it, that, that what, what gives them that definition is generally they consume huge amounts of your time. They don't thank you for it or are not appreciative of it, and then they complain even no matter what you do. That's correct. And that's what everybody says. Do you make money? No. No. Well, because they suck up all the time and work with the team. They, they, they take up all the time of the team, and they beat you up on price, and we never, ever want them to refer us. Right. Well, and they're likely to give you anti-referrals or complain about you. Well, because PETAs hang out with other PETAs. Yeah, okay. So you don't <laughs> want them. You absolutely don't want them. And it's very difficult, especially those of us who own a business, very difficult to say no. Right. I don't want this business because we see, oh, yeah, I could be making money on this. Actually, it's an opportunity cost. It's an opportunity loss to do business with our ideal clients, with the people we really can serve well. We are best saying no, because every time I've done that, right. right, the next day, the next month, the next week, somebody is inquiring that is perfect. Right. So right. while you're busy redoing the stuff that you need to do to make this one client happy, you could be out there looking for somebody who's going to be a really good fit for well, you. Well, exactly. And so we have, I'm not saying, I'm not saying never take a PETA. Right. Some companies choose to do that because, oh, it's a great name on the resume, uh -huh, you true. know, a big client, whatever. I'm saying stop and consider the cost to your organization of doing that. And if you do take that client, no, you're going to ramp up resources. You have to have a certain type of person working on it. And you have to be very clear with the client on what's expected. And you probably want to bid the deal higher. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, I, I knew uh, somebody in business, and he had, uh, I think he actually put that on his a line item, uh, sort of a, a grief fee. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm charging you a little extra because you've been such a pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, he didn't say that that way. Well, maybe he did. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he, he, was, he was a kind of person who could get away with it somehow. Um, how does the knowing who the, the, the pain in the ass client help you find your ideal client? Or what's the, what's the, you know, what's... How does it help you steer toward what you really want? Sometimes I think it's easier to figure out who the PETA is first. Mm -hmm. We know them. We know them a mile away. We know mm -hmm. the minute we talk to them on the phone or meet them. We know it's trouble. I mean, I've had that happen. I had somebody I wasn't quite sure about. It was in my master's program, and I'm thinking, this is going to be a lot of hand-holding. I think she thinks she's special. You know, another one, he... Um, 
you know, I'm not sure if he'll follow through. All of the, well, exactly panned out that way. Mm -hmm. So we know. Uh, and so I think it's easier to know who we don't want than sometimes what we do want. Right. So we rule that out, and then what's the opposite? Okay. So think about, I ask everybody to think about who is their ideal. Wave their magic wand. We don't get a chance to do that. <laughs> right. But we get what we ask for. When we ask for a referral, we're asking our referral source to introduce us right. to exactly the person we want to meet. So why not ask for exactly that person? Right. You see how simple that can be? Who, well, so who is, who is your ideal client? What do you ask for? Oh, I ask for a VP of sales. Okay. Or a business owner. Because those are the people who will make the decision to work through referrals. Because a referral selling approach is a strategic initiative. Okay. It's not train them or train me. It's we have a referral strategy. We have referral goals. We're weaving referrals into our sales process. Right. Yes, we're building skills in referral selling, but we're also holding people accountable. Mm -hmm. We will have reward and recognition. We're going to have different incentives for referrals. All of that comes into play. So it's truly a referral program. Okay. So that, that brings us right to our next point. How does someone, uh, a small business owner, uh, uh, develop a referral program that works for them? I mean, what are, uh, there's a system to it, and what are kind of the steps of the system? There's definitely a system, and it's a huge advantage for anybody in sales, and especially a small business owner, because sometimes it's hard for us to compete against bigger companies. Right. Right? Right. And when you receive an introduction, you're there ahead of everybody else. So it's not just, okay, I'm here, I got the request for proposal. You really want to be in there before, and sometimes before they even know they have a need. Right, right. So that you can help guide them and set the stage for what they need. Well, and this is, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you talk to, to, to us, because I, I do think that referral selling is one of those areas where small businesses do have an advantage over big, big businesses because yes. it's the personal approach that some bus big larger businesses can't do. And so really I want to give folks every uh, who are small business owners, we should be taking advantage of all those things that, you know, we know there are precious few things <laughs> that where we can really uh, mm -hmm. beat big businesses on. Uh, you know, the, 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 the big store, the big, a big store moves into town. How can you, how can you, how can a small retailer beat that for instance? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, it's important that we try to do everything we can to take advantage of our opportunities. Exactly. And the first thing, I mean, first of all, you have to believe in referrals, that you know that works. Uh, okay. And it's about leveraging the relationships we have. And the number one thing is that referrals must become a priority. You notice that word singular? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people who say, oh, I have so many priorities, right. I don't know what to start first. Well, you know what? It's, I think as human beings, we can only do one thing first. Uh -huh, right. Right? <laughs> At least I can. Maybe some people are better at doing two things at the same yeah, time. There are some programs that I have to help me do my schedule. I can overlap things on top of each other, but it never seems to work out. Yeah, that doesn't, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. A priority. So, so you decide as a business owner, this is the primary way I'm going to work. That doesn't negate everything else we need to be doing. The foundation, such as our website, our social media presence. Mm -hmm. Um, all the research we do, any white papers we have, any emails we, we do, the blogs, all of that, that needs to go on. Right. That's you need to have your outward appearance uh, be consistent with who you want to, uh, who you want to be. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and we need to then leverage our connections. And that means making referrals a priority. That will be our primary business development activity. What's happened today and you and I have talked about this right. a little bit, is we think that we can just step back behind the technology and we can email, we can be on social media, and you know what, we'll make connections and things will happen. Well, you know, that's risky. I only count on what I bring about. Okay. So we cannot say, I'm just going to sit and wait. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> we need to be proactive. So that's number one. It's, it's absolutely a priority. Okay. okay. So the second is referrals need to be part of our sales process. And a lot of small businesses actually don't have a written sales process. Mm -hmm. 
because we think process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know? we're a small business. We don't need process. <laughs> too much time it takes. No, yeah. well, I'm a salesperson too. Okay. And a sales process is pretty similar for every company. And I, I work with companies on their sales process first because we need to identify where in our sales process we're going to ask for referrals. Okay. But if we don't know our process, be pretty hard to do. Well, for a small business, what would be kind of a typical sales process? Typical one would be you'd have prospecting. If I'm looking at a circle, uh -huh. so you'd have your prospecting here. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have a meeting. Mm -hmm. Then you might do a proposal, close, implement, and then it goes right up to asking for a referral and following through. Okay. And then there's various steps within that. That will vary, but those are the main steps. Okay. But you have to be cognizant of them. And, That's right. Right. And, and where do you ask? And a lot of people, well, they step back and they'll say, well, you know what? I can't really ask before we sign the deal. No, I better wait till we implement. Mm. No, I better wait till we get some results and then I can ask. The challenge is we're usually so far away from the initial decision maker mm -hmm. that doesn't work. So I say you can ask any time you've delivered value to the client. Okay. Uh, that's a very overused term. So my definition of that is your client says thank you. Oh. Right? It's really simple. You might have given that your client an idea maybe connected them with someone they needed to meet, Right. sent an article to them, maybe made a suggestion of something for their business they'd never thought of. Okay. How cool is that? Right. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, that, well, that, I do that. I'll, I'll, those, and in fact, that's part of my, that would be my definition of uh, ideal clients would be clients who are willing to, who are open to accepting some of those ideas. There you go. You know. That's it. You don't want someone who's totally closed-minded because right. then you're, you probably have a PETA on your hands. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many times have I you know, been asked to do things that I just know are not in the best interest, but this is what they want? I'm like, you, yeah. know, you really should be doing this. That's no, right. no, no, we need to do this. It's like, okay. Yeah, so at that point, we all need to make a decision right. whether we want to move forward or not. Right. So the but first whenever you deliver value... You deliver value. You can ask anywhere in the sales process. And, uh, and you, what does that sound like? What, asking? Yes. It's, it's really about, first of all, there's building blocks. Mm -hmm. It's describing the results your client has gotten or typical results other people have received. Okay. So they chose to do business with you for a specific reason. What was it? They were convinced you would deliver a business impact to them, right? Right, and they get a huge return on their investment. So that's that's one. It's not about what you do; it's about what they get, right? Always. Okay. And then second, be really clear about who you're looking for. Your ideal client, right? Right. Not anyone, right? <laughs> because anyone could be the PETA. <laughs> And then you want to look at all your sources of referrals. Obviously, clients are the best, and we're not asking all the time. That would be a huge tip for everybody. If you're not asking every single client, I'm not talking about client companies, everybody you know in a client company. Oh, okay. You can ask where you have that relationship. Even if you haven't talked to them in a while, you just call them up. Well, you, the well, you and... should be talking to them in a while. Ah. Right? <laughs> so oh, part of the process. Well, that is, oh, in fact, I was on a trip. And this, this gentleman said to me, he ran a group in a large bank, and he said, well, I tell my guys they should reach out and talk to their, their clients once a year. <laughs> I said, excuse me? I said, I got to know them better. I said, once a year? Yeah, what's once a year? I mean, these, these people were dealing with big money, et cetera. I said, you'd be talking to these people all the time. Well, then he pushed back, and he said, well, no, you have to understand that they each have 250 clients. They can't be talking to everybody that much. I said, okay, how many of your 250 clients match your ideal? Mm -hmm. So you have different approaches, staying in touch approaches, mm -hmm. depending on the size client, the relationship you have, et cetera. Right. Yeah. But you keep in touch in some way. Right. In some way you stay in touch because you don't know when people are ready. I see. And that's part of a th something I guess you'd plan out. Okay, I'll, I'll call every so often. I'll email them every so often. That's right. The handwritten note. Very, mm -hmm. Maybe you've seen something 
in the Business Times or local they paper. Had about, that's yeah. right. I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sometimes remember, you know, many years ago, there was a thing yeah. called the handwritten note. In fact, I was speaking to someone about that this morning, and he was, I said, well, I had one client I visited, and he said, Joanne, let me show you the note you sent me. He had it up on his bulletin board on the wall. Wow. And so the person I was speaking with on the phone, he says, I do the same thing. Pin it up. You get so few. Right, right. But what is it you can do to stay in touch with people? That is huge. And then once you have a good business reason for an introduction, you've described who you want, you're going to ask your connection, and it could be a client, it could be someone else, you know, for who one or two people they know who match that description. And then you're going to get into a conversation about who that person is. Mm -hmm. And your referral source will ask you questions to clarify. Right. And that's what you do, one or two people. And when they tell you, then you want to learn as much as you can about them. Right. And yeah. you make it sound so natural. But, you know, I think for a, a lot of people are apprehensive about it, you know, calling up somebody and saying, oh, I, you know, I want business. There, there's a number of reasons people get apprehensive. I, I could think, well, first of all, you don't want them to think you need business. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that could be a trap. The thing is, um, most people are uncomfortable asking. It's interesting, Reese. I've been working this process for almost 17 years. Mm -hmm. I've worked with men, I've worked with women, worked with different nationalities, worked with people in their 20s, worked with people in their 60s and 70s. And it doesn't seem to matter. It's a human factor that when we ask, we're actually asking someone to help us out, aren't we? Right. Not so cool. No, I guess not. You know, like you, like you say, it, it, it's like a little uncomfortable. It might feel like, oh, it's pushy, it's salesy. If I have to ask. You don't oh, want to make them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. If they, and then also, um, maybe they think I'm not really successful if mm -hmm. I have to ask. Right, right. You know, all of that. So we get this tape running in our heads, and we don't ask. And, and the fact is that I want you to think about times when someone you knew and you really liked asked you to help them out, right? did you do it? Uh, yeah, if I could. Yeah. A lot of times I can't think of the person that they're looking for. Yeah, they probably haven't been specific enough. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is we all do. Right. You know, we do it all the time. And then there are those times, though, that I think in my mind that somebody has called me up and asked me for a referral, and I'm just like, ooh, they're being pushy, or they're asking, or it doesn't, doesn't somehow seem appropriate. And, uh, and maybe that's the, the that I replay in my head when I go to do it and feel uncomfortable. And uh, that, that could be because you need to earn the right to ask. Mm -hmm. And some people haven't done that. So to your point, if you haven't spoken to someone in, I don't know, six months, a year, right. no, it will be uncomfortable <laughs> and it's going to be weird. Hey, remember me? <laughs> well, and you know the people you only hear from when they need something. Right. Yeah. Right, so right. we don't want to be those people, do we? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, and you say your, 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 your new book, Pick Up the Damn Phone, you think the telephone is the, is the most appropriate way in general? When you begin to ask for referrals, mm -hmm. you need to do it in person. Okay. Because that's what's going to be the most comfortable. You can see the person's eyes, get the reaction, slow down, and have a conversation. In person, you mean in person? Like I mean in person. Not on the phone in No, person. like we're here face to face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're having coffee, you're having breakfast, you're having lunch, you're having a beer. It doesn't matter. Right. Something like that. The thing is, what I mean by pick up the damn phone, as we do a lot online, we do a lot on social media, it's not appropriate to ask for a conversation through technology, to ask for that referral introduction. Not appropriate, because that's where people get pushed out of shape. Here's what happens. Okay. You see that I'm connected to someone, say on LinkedIn, uh -huh. and you email me and you ask for an introduction. Well, first of all, you don't know if I know the person. You have no idea what my relationship is. I feel pushed out of shape. I've had people tell me that. Right. That's not appropriate. You see that I'm linked to someone, you know me very well, then I want you to either email me or call me. You can email me this and I say, you know, how well do you know George Smith? I see you're connected. And I might say, hey, I know him really well. That's the time for a personal conversation. Right. Then you say, hey, can I give you a call? Yes. So, the, so here's the thing. If, if um, I'm going to introduce you to George, mm -hmm. I need to know why you want the introduction. 
What is the business reason? Okay, so there's going to be a back and forth. You're going to have to ask some questions. I'm That's have correct. To yeah. That's correct. And some long little email thing back and forth isn't going to. No, get... and we've seen it. We've seen it in companies. We get these huge email trails. Right. And they don't go anyplace. I have so many times. I have picked up the phone. I have talked to people. I had that happen three times in one afternoon a couple months ago. Each one of those people said, I'm so glad you called because huh. we could have been going on for days with this email. Right. Yeah, we've, You know, I, yeah. you take the, the time to write. It, it, something gets misunderstood. You have the conversation. It's solved in two minutes. Right, right. Uh, now, and then that, that does bring me to something. So in person is, is the best way to ask for a referral, sitting down, mm -hmm. meeting. But, you know, if they're... If they're not a local business, if they're around, then the, I guess the phone is probably yeah. the next. The next. next that's correct. Thing. But you should start out in person. If you can, you yeah. know, start yeah. out at no. That's really important. Uh, yeah, I have well, but I have clients in in the UK. Well, yeah, I guess you have get to a, get on a plane. Get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did say a priority. Yeah, <laughs> the priority. Yes. Um, okay, uh, I just want you to go through. One more time, because we were talking about the process. I think I interrupted you. <laughs> so the, the sort of the process that a person has to go through mm -hmm. to implement something like this. The building blocks. The building blocks. So the first building block is, what are the business results you typically deliver? What's the impact on a business? Okay. This, and Because that's why I'm going to introduce you okay. to a, a client of mine or a colleague or a friend or, or whomever. Second, who are you looking for? Who's your ideal client? Where do you want the introduction? In my case, it's a VP of sales or a business owner. Okay. That's exactly the person I meet. Okay. That's where I get the intro. And with every one of those people, I say, would we be talking unless I've been referred? I have a phone call with the president of a mid good size, mid-sized company next week. I was introduced to this person. There's no way I'd be talking to him if I was just going like that. Yeah, or trying to connect on LinkedIn. Hey, yeah, I, yeah, I do no, sales programs. it doesn't work. Right. Now, his admin set up the meeting. Perfect. Good. I wouldn't have had that meeting otherwise. So be very, very clear about who you're looking for. The next building block is to look at all your sources of referrals and get your current clients up there because they are your best. They're the low-hanging fruit. Okay. We're not asking all the time. Some people will say to me, well, Joanne, I just started a new business. Well, go back to your previous clients. Oh, okay. You know, they, they refer you because they know they can trust you. You follow through. You will take care of your contacts just as you took care of them. It's really important. Mm -hmm. And then all, all the people you know. Just make a list and decide where is it you know people the best. And that's where you want to start. Right. And then the next is you're just going to ask for one or two people they know that match that description of your ideal client. That's it. Right. And you're going to ask for the introduction. So we've talked about the, the steps of a referral, but to do a referral business takes, you were saying, is a, is a, there's a process to that. And so the first one is figuring out, you know, who are your referral sources. And, and what are the things that people have to do on an ongoing basis to, to, to make sure, to implement a referral selling system in their business. So we said it had to be a priority and part of the sales process. Mm -hmm. We also need metrics. We need ways to measure it. So I always ask every client before we start working together, mm -hmm. what will make our referral program successful for you? It's different with each client. And whatever we do, it's going to be different with each client. They need to know that. So if, you're, if, if um, you own a business and you want to implement a referral program, how will you know it's successful? You might say something like, well, I will increase my revenue by 20%. I'll increase my qualified pipeline by 30%. Um, I'll, I'll have X percent of more clients. I'll be in a different vertical. I mean, it could be all different things. Right, right. But you need to know. I had one client, he had one metric. Okay. He used Salesforce as his CRM. Okay. And he said he only wanted to measure the referrals that became an opportunity in Salesforce. Okay. Why? Because he knew that when it was an opportunity in Salesforce, they converted at least 50% of the time. Okay. Had to meet certain criteria to be an opportunity. Oh, okay. That was his metric. 
we need to ask ourselves that question. What's our metric? Right. Well, because like in so many things, unless you have something to measure, you don't know where you are. You don't. So, you know, I need to pick it up. But how, how does one set a metric if, if, let's say, you're a small business owner, you have, you know, you haven't done a, a, a referral program before as such, you know, how would you know where to set a metric? I mean, you know, just pick a number out of the air or, you know. Well, you should have some kind of plan. I mean, I don't believe in complicated plans. I'm a salesperson. <laughs> you know, just some bullets. One page business plan is great. Right. Um, but no, I mean, we all have goals. So right. what are the goals? So as, let's take an example. So if I'm a small business mm -hmm. and I say, in this year, I want to increase my revenue by 20%. Let's so just reasonable. say. Okay. Okay. If you decide that 10% of your revenue for the year is coming for, from referrals, then figure out that 10% equals what percent in dollars, if you're in the United States right, or Canada right. or whatever, whatever your denomination is. And then break that down to your average sale. So let's take a very simple example. Say that 10% of the revenue would equal $100,000. Okay. Say your average sale is $10,000. Okay. So you need 10 sales from referrals. Let's work the math. I'm going to do this quite conservatively. Okay. okay. Say you ask 40 people that you know really well to introduce you to the person you want to meet. Okay. But let's say of the 40, only 20 come up with someone to introduce you to. Okay. Okay. We say that when you get the introduction to the person you want to meet, you convert at least 50% of this. You, 20 people make the introduction, you convert 50%, you have 10 new clients. Okay. Uh, it's really that simple. Well, okay. But you have to start, as we say, with the end in mind. This is that sales math. That's why I was there a little bit. <laughs> it's Because, really you know, when simple. I do these plans, I'm like, well, I want to double my, in I want to double my income. <laughs> you know? That's scary. In one year, I think, well, that's scary. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, trying to make realistic goals. But, I mean, it, it is good to back it, back it in, I can You say. have to back it in because then you know about your activity. I mean, if you, if you don't, my, my phrase is, if you don't ask, you don't get. Right. How many people do you need to ask to end up with 10 new clients? Right. That's the question. Each of us, whether we run a small business, we run a sales team, we run a mid-sized company. We have to be asking ourselves that specific question. Right. Well, and also I think it, it would it would be somewhat of a motivator, right? Because if I know, if I've looked at the numbers and I've figured it out and, and I can know that if I do call these 40 people, that, you know, logic would dictate that that but the, what the result would be. So unless I, unless I do call them, it's not going to happen. That's correct. Right. So then, if I but, but I then I can schedule it. I'll call this one here, this one there, this one there, and that way, I know that you know it, it motivates me to actually do it, and I can check them off. And I go, okay, I'm only at. You can't do ten and go. Well, you know that's that's all. You know, I guess I'm done. That's, yeah. I've done. I've tried to do referrals. Whereas you know that if you have to do forty, it keeps you going to. You go, well, I've only done twenty, so I have to dig a little deeper to find twenty more. And you, you need to be asking every single week, mm. right? So a minimum of one a week, and that's, that's not good for anybody. So right, at right. least two a week. And it, it becomes a habit. So it, referral selling doesn't become a habit overnight like anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it is a habit that we have to get used to doing because I know it would be difficult for me to jump right into doing yeah. it all the time. Uh, now, the other thing you've talked about is some traps to avoid. Yeah. And uh, we want to definitely hit on that. What are, what are some of the, th the traps that people can get stuck in? Oh, you named one of them, not asking. Well, okay. You know, I mean, that is, a, <laughs> that is a trap. I mean, people believing the phone's going to ring. And people ask me all the time, when can I sit back and wait for the phone to ring? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, when you figure it out, let me know. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been guilty of that. I certainly, it's, it's, uh, I've always ho hoped that I could just put out my shingle and then have people call. Uh, mm -hmm. And that I wouldn't have to go out uh, proactively looking for for work, and so I've you know I've I've strived to do you know such good work that people can't help but refer me. Well, that's another trap. Thank you. It's assuming our clients are going to refer us, <laughs> <laughs> and many times we do. You know, we've done great work. They should be referring us. Right. Well, number one. Why is the phone not ringing? You know, they don't know that we're running a referral business. Mm -hmm. They're busy running their business. 
unless we have that conversation with them, you know, sometimes they will automatically refer you. If somebody said to one of my clients, hey, I see you've done a great job with referrals, how's that happen? Mm -hmm. then, then they might trigger them making the introduction to me. But it's not automatic. And sometimes we expect that we sit back and wait for our clients to refer us. Doesn't happen. Right. Another trap is we can appear way too busy. People say to you, how are things going? You say, I'm really busy. Right. Right? And so people assume you don't need any more business. I've had people say to me, Joanne, do you need more business? And I go, excuse me? <laughs> I mean, whoever says they don't. Right. right. Sometimes it's crazy what we figure out how to get the work done. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's those times when you're thinking, well, if I, you know, I'm almost ready to hire that one more person, yeah. but I don't quite have the business. And if only one more client gave you the business, we'd go ahead and pick up that other person. But, uh, but, you know, but because everybody sees how busy we are. I mean, I've had clients do this. Uh, you know, I, I, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he said, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I needed this video, and I, I went and hired these other folks to do it. I go, how come you didn't call me? He goes, well, I know you really, you keep telling me how busy yeah. you are. And uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm never too busy, <laughs> you know. We'll always make time, you know. It's, uh, it sort of expands to fit the space. Well, it does. And a good response is when people say, how are things going and you are busy? Mm -hmm to say, I'm really busy, but I always have time for one or two more great clients. Oh, that's a great, that's a good response. Right? Something yeah. like that. So, uh, and then, and so you know that you've leveled the playing field, so to speak. Right, right. Right? And, and for your clients, sometimes they fear that if you get too busy or they refer you, you won't have time for them. Right. We know that, so we can just cut that off at the pass. You know, we can say that I have time for a couple more great clients. I'm still going to take care of you the way we've done before. And you just make it happen. Make it seamless. Right, right. Well, that's good. That's, good. that's also a good advice. Are there any other, other traps that you see happen all the time for people? A big one is that people haven't built their skills in referral selling. Okay. So they'll, they'll say things like, um, oh, is there anyone you know who would benefit from my services? All right. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh oh. I think I've done this one. Yeah. So they'll say, well, I've tried asking for referrals. It just doesn't work. Right. They haven't built skills. They haven't implemented. They haven't practiced. Okay. I'll practice. And so it sounds, as I say, referrals are simple. Right. Not easy. Right. So when you say practice, mm -hmm. what, now what, what do you mean by practice? I mean, once people have taken advantage of my system, mm -hmm. learned and built skills in referral selling, mm -hmm. they need to practice before they go live. It's like anything. Right, right. You know, it, it's... Do you, you call can, up a friend on the phone and go through it or...? Well, you meet in person. Oh, okay. You meet in person because right, right. you can, you know, see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> and you need to commit to practice. It's the hardest thing for adults to do. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, you can look at any sports analogy or any music group. I mean, mm -hmm. how did they get good? They didn't just go pick up the guitar and start playing and were virtuoso. Right. Right? Tons of practice and very, very focused practice. The same is true of anybody who's ever done a sport. Right. Well, like a sport. Exactly. That's a, that's a good example. Uh, well, any sport. You can, you can go so far on your own. Right, you can pick up the racket. You can, right. you know, and you can go so far. But at some point, you do need to get some coaching, get some, you know, work with somebody who can analyze you and see what you're doing. Swimming is a good example. You can't see yourself swim. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, right. So uh, you know, at some point, you need somebody from on the deck looking down who kind of knows what they're doing to say, uh, you know. Well, you don't get good at anything without practice. Right. Oh, that's the same thing here. People, I don't know, when we're in business, can we resist that practice? Right. And that's what makes us good. So the people who really invest in themselves are the ones who come out way ahead on this. Okay. You know who it is, Reese? The people who I talk to who are interested in a referral program mm -hmm. are always the high achievers. Oh, that's interesting. Because they're the high achievers because they recognize the value of investing in themselves. That's the way they got to be high achievers. I see. So, how do, how typically do people keep track of of their referral program? I mean, what what are the tools that people use? They typically use some kind of CRM, a customer relationship management system, okay. and they track their referrals and who they've asked. 
That's probably the simplest way to do it. And then just like asked, not asked, and... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you can customize fields mm -hmm. within that and, and you know the conversations you've had. Also, some of the social sites now have ways of doing that. So oh, really? we have to keep checking that. LinkedIn has a way of tracking connections now. There's some other sites that are coming up where they actually have a way of getting introduced and tracking referrals. It's an ongoing process. There's always something new. I'm testing some of them out now, but I'm not clear if they're really going to work. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, but there is some technology coming on this. There is. I mean, you can also, okay, old-fashioned thing, you can right. use pencil and paper. Yeah, that's or put, true. Do it on your computer. Do you remember when we used to have the file box and you'd had the days of the week, 1 to 31 in a month? Particular file. The, yeah. And then you called someone on the 1st and they say, call me back on the 20th and you move their card to the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever works for you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, are, uh, we are letting our age out. There, <laughs> I, think. I think a lot of people might remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems like so much is on the, on the computer these days. It I'm is. always looking for the latest tool, perfect yeah. tool and I haven't found it yeah, yet. Yeah, but you can't just go after the the last great bright object, you right. know, the bright shiny object thing, and everybody just grabs onto it. Unless a tool increases your productivity and simplifies your life, it's not worth it. Right, right. That's, Pretty, that's a great way to think about, am I going to use it or not? Right, and the fundamentals are the same whether you're using the tool or not. That's right. You know, you never see somebody, uh, you know, get a system in place uh, because they have the the, the tool. Instead, they have a system in place that they make the tool work within their system. It That's seems correct. like it's yeah. not, the, not the opposite way around. Yeah. So, Joanne, thanks for uh, talking with us about this today. Um, I know uh, you help a lot of people, and I hope people get a lot out of it. I'm always glad to give referral tips, Reese, and you know I have a ton of those and other great resources on my website. Right. Uh, Joanne's uh, website is nomorecoldcalling.com. Her contact information is at the bottom of this page, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Reese.